on BBC4 next Thursday at 9pm. See, time now is uh, 8.57. For some of us, maps. We're talking about maps this morning. Remember maps? Big piece of paper. You're you so happy when we talk I about am. maps. It, it does. It takes me right back. Yeah. Um, OK, for some, like Charlie, a joy. For others, they're a thing of the past, replaced by sat-navs and smartphones. But they can also tell us about society, politics and even literature. That's what a new exhibition at the British Library is taking a look at. Graham Satchel has been taking a closer look. Nineteen sixty one, a lunar globe made by the Russians. It was the first time people had seen the dark side of the moon. Some maps are revelatory, like this the hidden depths of the Atlantic Ocean. Some are chilling. The evacuation map for residents living near the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant. Each map tells its own story. And here it is, great-great-grandfather's map. 100 acre wood. So many kids have looked at this. <laughs> You can see the childlike quality in the illustration, so I think it's, it's fantastic that he was able to capture that and put it on the page. This is our map, the Siege of Sarajevo. It shows what it means to be besieged. 300,000 people were put under such terror for three, four years. It does really give me a goosebumps because it's just extraordinary how many things have changed. But it's also extraordinary how long, when the siege was actually lasting, how long it felt like it's never going to end. The sketch that started everything. Harry Beck's first draft of the London Underground map in 1931. He ignored the geography, drew in straight lines, changed tube maps forever. It really was the map that started a way of thinking about the underground. A way of seeing the world, a way of reconstructing the world so that people could understand it and make sense of it. I love it because it's like a puzzle. Tom Harper's favourite map is by an artist who mapped his movements with a GPS tracker for 16 years around London. Whenever I tell people what I do for a living, the answer is always, I love maps. And yes, we use them to find our way around, but also, I think very much, we use them to consider who we are, because it's really all about ourselves and our relationship with place. The original sketch of Middle-earth. Before he wrote a word of Lord of the Rings, Tolkien mapped his world to make sense of it. And from Middle-earth to outer space, we end lost in the wonder of NASA's map of the birth of the universe 13 billion years ago. Graham Satchel, BBC News, at the British Library. <coughs> Let's talk now to Professor Mike Hefferman from the University of Nottingham, involved in setting up the exhibition. Sorry, I'm, I'm struggling with the map here. We'll talk about that in a moment. You would just say we've got a whole bunch of these, like the A to Zs here, uh, and there's stories behind maps, isn't there? So tell us about the A to Z. Well, the A to Z is, is a fascinating um, uh, attempt to try and construct uh, detailed maps of, of, of the city of London initially. Yeah. And it's a story associated with a woman, a rather remarkable woman called Phyllis. Phyllis Purcell, who actually walked the streets of the city to try and construct it. Her father was a Hungarian Jewish immigrant and wanted to as it were, create a, a better sense of the city for people who were coming in, flocking into cities like so London. So she took it upon herself just to kind she of took it upon herself. To see it and then write it down? Yeah, he established a company which actually produced lots of maps for the British newspapers at the time, the Daily Mail, back in the years before the First World War. And then she developed that idea that he originally formulated to produce these A to Z maps, and then they went all over the world. It's quite a romantic it? notion, it that, is. isn't it, really? Yeah. I mean, because you, you think of today, the way you map something, it's all technological, and it's quite easily done with, with today's technology, yet 
by doing something like that, you discover so much more when you're you getting do. an A to Z put you together I mean, by the feet in your ground. Yeah, the reason I became a geographer was really this business as we were just talking about, looking at maps. And it's a, a hugely romantic uh, um, exercise in connecting yourself with worlds yeah. that you will probably never never visit or never know to those distant strangers all over the world. Sorry, I had sort of forgotten quite how cumbersome yeah. <laughs> a map can be. This, I mean, this is a cracking map because this is Snowdonia. Yeah, so, you know, just in terms of stuff yeah. going on on the, on the pictures, they're yeah. brilliant, aren't they? They are. You can look at them forever. I mean, these are ones that, you know, are relatively within one's sort of a geographical purview. You can get to these places if you're in the, in the UK. But as a young lad growing up in... A, a small Midlands town, you know, a, a map was a means of escape for me. It was a place I could imagine being in Montevideo or wherever it was on these wonderful maps. Well, you get them out when you're going on holiday, don't you? you That's do what you do. <laughs> but there, there's more, there are more to this. I mean, they are beautiful and they are fascinating. They let the imagination run wild. But the connection they have to politics, sure. historical yeah. events as well, that's yeah. something that people don't necessarily they think They don't. About. And that's why this exhibition is very important, because it focuses on the 20th century, which is the period really when maps become available to the common populations as well, for everybody to be able to get hold of maps because they're mass produced, they're cheap and organisations like the Ordnance Survey are doing that. But when they are available on that scale, they then become a very, very powerful tool. Well, for we've got one of Berlin. So on. We've yeah. got one of Berlin um, and you can explain this, that the, the, well this is Earth, um, we'll, get to, we'll get to one of Berlin because there's a propaganda map yeah. of Berlin. Here we go. Um, and that the importance of that? Yeah, this is an American map um, uh, produced by a guy called Effie Manning. And there was a whole series of these sorts of maps that had that sort of global uh, vision of the world. And they were produced by a team, really, of American cartographers, the most famous of which was a guy called uh, Harrison Eads. Eads Harrison. And it was a, really a, an attempt to, as it were, pre present to the American public the kind of global threats that they were under in the United States during the Second World War and where they, they should be targeting. A lot of the maps focused on the Pacific. And they were published in the major American uh, magazines at the time and media associated with the big newspapers. So they were an attempt to educate an American public. It's fascinating. About Don't the think war. we haven't noticed your map time. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> the best is the best tie of the morning. That is the best Our, um, tie of the yeah. morning. Our time's up, so I'm just going to put this map over here. Uh, like that. Uh, uh, and there we go. Thank you very much. It's been lovely to see you here this morning. Indeed. Thank you. Uh, Maps in the 20th Century opens on Friday at the British Library and will run until March. Now, I'd forgotten how big a full size map is. They're big, isn't it? Alexander Armstrong will be with us in a moment. Singer, comedian, and show host. We'll be talking to him more in a moment. Here's a look at the headlines where you are this morning. Good morning from BBC London News.